So, I've been working as a janitor at the local high school for a few years now, and it's one of the most easiest jobs I've been on. It wasn't a big school, as the town it was in was relatively small, so I was the only janitor working the night shifts. Most of my duties would be to go from building to building, mopping floors, and picking up trash. It was a chill job, but it could get a bit lonely from time to time. One night, I was called into work a bit later than usual, as the other janitor stayed to make up extra hours he had requested. I took his spot once he had left, and pretty soon I was the only one in the building. It was a Monday night if I remember correctly, and I was doing my usual nightly routine of mopping the hallways, when I hear the sound of a door slamming closed. My initial thought was that the door stopper I had placed to keep it open had somehow gotten moved and I go over to see what it was. I could vaguely remember closing every door in this floor, so I was surprised that I had forgotten to close one. I go to the classroom where I heard the noise and peek my head inside expecting to find the stopper on the floor. Sure enough, the door stopper was on the floor and that's when I noticed something else by one of the metal cabinets. It only took me a good second to realize that there was a finger wrapped around it. Because of the angle, I didn't see who was hiding behind there and I sure as hell didn't want to know. I locked the door and didn't spend another second in there and practically ran outside the building calling security. When they showed up, I led them to the room where I saw the person hiding. However, by the time we got there, there was nobody inside and the window was left wide open. The whole ordeal didn't make any sense as we were on the third floor which was about 40 feet from the ground so there was no way he would have survived a fall like that. The security guard gave me an annoyed type of look as if he didn't believe me. I explained what I saw to my girlfriend but instead of believing me she went on to lecture me about how I wasn't getting enough sleep. Looking back now, I don't blame her, but I know what I saw. A few days later, one of the janitors was working the night shift as I had called in sick that day. He was mopping the floors of the second building when he found a dirty homeless man inside one of the storage closets. The man attacked him with a large butcher knife causing a truckload of blood to spill. Thankfully, there was an officer on standby and must have heard the commotion from upstairs. Long story short, the cop teases the man and was obviously arrested. Thankfully, the other gender had survived but had to have several stitches done. I still don't know as to how the man had managed to get in the school without being caught. School security was pretty strict about letting outsiders in unless it was a parent or something. I worked that job for another month after and never saw anything abnormal again. When I was about 19 or so, I got my first ever real job working at a gas station during the spring. It wasn't the best paying job, but it was enough to get my foot through the door to start making payments for college and stuff. I lived by myself in a small one bedroom apartment that my parents paid for, but got the job in the meantime to cover other expenses. My managers, being the jerks that they were, gave me a week of night shifts knowing I had a 7am class every morning. It was annoying to say the least, but I really needed the money. During the night shift, you'd have people constantly come in and out for gas, and right around the 10pm mark, business would be slow for the most part. After that, you'd maybe have one or two shady people come in once an hour for a snack or cigarettes. 
That being said, it's still a pretty good time where I could chill out for a few hours. One night, I was on my shift as usual and had just finished serving what I thought was the last customer for the night as I was about to end my shift. As I'm packing up and getting ready to leave, a car pulls up right in front of the store and a man gets out. He wore a stained white shirt and had a scruffy beard with messy hair. He walks right in and I greet him with a hello and ask if I could help him with anything. He completely ignores my question and walks over to the refrigerators and grabs a six pack of beer. I live in the south, so people like this were very common around here. I tell him his total and he then says something that made my skin crawl. Hey, you're really pretty. I love your hair. Laughing awkwardly, I tell him thanks and he proceeds to hand me a $10 bill, making sure our hands touched. I give him his change and tell him to have a good rest of his night and go on my phone, hoping he get the hint to leave me alone. He thankfully left and I waited for my coworker who was working after me to arrive so I could go home. However, he must have been running late because it was 10 minutes past his shift and I was getting a bit annoyed. 10 minutes turned into 20 and then eventually 30. As I was about to call him to see where he was, I then noticed someone hiding behind one of the gas pumps. It was a little hard to see, but because of the light, I could make it out to be the same man from earlier. I had no idea as to what he was doing, but I could tell that it clearly wasn't good. He then comes out from behind the pump, and I see that he's clearly hiding something behind his back and I wasn't going to stick around to find out. I grabbed my keys and was headed out toward my car, when I see him approach the front door giving me this unsettling look. It was a look of hatred and fury. Suddenly he pulls out a gun and proceeds to show it to me as if he wanted me to know that he was armed. At this point I'm frantically dialing 911 on my phone and he then shoots the lock and steps inside yelling at me while having me at gunpoint. He orders me to give him all the money in the register or he won't hesitate to pull the trigger. I take a few deep breaths and calmly hand him the money we had and he then takes off down the road. I call the police while bawling my eyes out in fear and the operator tells me to stay on the line with her until an officer arrived. Thankfully, the guy never made it too far as police had managed to track him down. Turns out, this guy was wanted for sexual assault and murder. His victims were two family members, one of them being his wife, one widower, and two gas station employees. Just. Like. Me. The next day I quit my job at that gas station and now work at my local supermarket. So this happened a little over two years ago. It was late 2016 and I just started my new job at a motel. It was low pay but I needed an office job as it was required for my training. One of my friends, Michael, got me this job. For a few days I did training with the owner in the mornings and for two nights Michael trained me. Our job was the 11pm to 7am shift. Nothing too exciting, just checking guests in and doing paperwork. My boss, who is the owner, went away with his wife on vacation for a week, which is attributed to the swift training I had to endure. So it was my first night alone on the night shift. There was a monitor with security cameras around the motel's property and large glass windows all around the office building with a glass door, and there was no night window like most motels have. It was fairly early in the night, at about 1am. 
I was just doing my normal paperwork when a man walks in and asks if we have any rooms available. Usually if someone is sketchy, my boss has me lie and say no, but he seemed normal at the moment. However, we just had a meeting on customer satisfaction and our boss was really encouraging us to be more polite to guests. Without hesitation, I said, uh, yes, of course, just for one? And he replies, yes. So I begin creating the reservation on the computer when I notice he starts swatting in the air and making spitting noises, as if he were being surrounded by flies. I tried to ignore it, and as far as I was concerned, it wasn't my business, so I try to check him into the room as quickly as possible. I give him his key, and he's on his way. At this point in time, I could be described as very timid and had a lot going on in my personal life, so I hope you could all understand my reaction to what happens next. The man comes back from his room and slams his hand on the glass door and causes me to jump. Absolutely frightened, I look up to see him just staring at me. He cracks the door and puts his head through and says, I can't get into my room. Why won't you let me into my room? My only defense is trying to be helpful, so I replied with, Oh, um, maybe there's something wrong with your key. Here, let me give you another one. The look he had in his eyes was inexplicable. I felt like I was in absolute danger. I handed him his new key and he went back to his room. I tried texting Michael because he was the one who trained me. Though it was in the middle of the night and he was asleep, I needed some guidance. With no reply from Michael, I noticed the man trudging down the stairs to come back and I go to absolute panic mode. I run into the back office and lock the door and I pull out my pocket knife. It's important to keep protection when working at night. All the while, I hear the man in the office yelling, Hello? Hello? Why won't you let me into my room? Do you not like me? Me being an absolute idiot and not standing my ground and calling the police when I'm feeling scared, I decide to take the situation on alone. I reply with, I'm just on the phone. I'll be right out. I then start calling Michael over and over for help, but no answer. I decided to take a few deep breaths and then step out of the office. However, the man was not there, but rather in the bathroom. I start hearing him talking to himself, saying, Kill her. Kill her. Kill her. My heart sank. Still being an idiot and not calling the police, he comes out and I say, Oh, uh, your key was broken. I'm sorry. Let me escort you to your room. He agrees, thankfully. I was wearing a long sleeve sweater, so with my arms down, I was able to hide my knife in my hand while holding it. I begin to walk outside, and he seemed insistent to walk behind me. We begin making our way to the staircase and up towards his room. I was sweating from how nervous I was, cautiously looking behind me to make sure he wasn't going to make a move. He stops at a room, and I stop at his room a few doors down, I smile and I say, Oh, that's the wrong room. This is your room. As it clearly said on the door. The whole time, he was going to someone else's room trying to open the door. I quickly ran back to the office and locked the door. The next guest I checked in was a police officer from a few towns away. I felt bad for him about the guy, but they seemed willing to keep an eye out and ear out. The next night, the man came back but I had the doors locked and told him we were all booked up. I explained to my boss what happened when he got back from vacation. However, he didn't take me that seriously. I continued to work there on the night shift for the next year, where many other strange encounters happened. So, strange man, let's never meet again. If you ever feel uncomfortable, always call the police.